So in this video, I'm going to attempt to make a bowl out of this piece of aphromosia. I was in the lumberyard the other day and I saw this on the shelf and I thought it looked just like a bit of a, a plain brown lump of wood, um, which didn't really have a huge amount of character. And I pretty much walked straight past it. And then as I walked past, I kind of turned around and I just caught the end grain at the corner of my eye. And I just started imagining what's underneath all of this exterior. So um, it's called, as I say, it's called aphromosia. Apparently it's uh, otherwise known as African teak. Um, I've never used it before. Apparently it's quite dusty to turn. Um, but we're going to give it a go and, um, and see what it comes out like. And whilst this is a, a fairly chunky block of wood, I don't want to waste any. So... Um, and it's going to produce quite a small bowl as it is. So I'm going to half it or square it off, um, keep a section for a, another project and just turn this half. But also what I don't want to do is waste too much of this creating a base and a tenon. So what I'm going to do is try and flatten this off very slightly. Um, so I've got a good contact area and use um, a piece of cherry that I've got here as a glue block uh, and then we can sacrifice at the end. It's just so I don't lose too much of a depth of the piece of wood. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna take this over to, unfortunately I've got to use my chop saw. I don't yet have a band saw. It's on my shopping list, but I've not quite got that far. Uh, and we're gonna square it off and then get this glued on. And just take a quick measurement, 115 mil mark. 115mm off that way. Just square that across and then we'll just use the chop saw as well just to take off the corners. Just um because I've heard it's quite a hard wood, so just limit the uh the wear and tear on the tools. And also all of these little extra pieces of scrap wood I'm keeping in a uh, in a bin somewhere, uh, ready for when I start a little bit of resin turning. As I say, it's not really ideal that I'm using a chop saw to do this, but um, in the absence of a band saw, this will do. So what I'm going to use for the glue block is just a little bit too big on the corners as well. So I'm just going to take those off. Okay, what I'm going to try and do now is there are a couple of raised areas on here, but I just want to smooth down so I can get a really good contact with the sacrificial block glue block. actually remove those bumps really well and you can tell where I've made that cut that grain is going to look absolutely stunning so um, got high hopes for this next step is to glue this on there okay. so I'm going to leave that overnight to give it best chance of being as strong as possible and then we'll um, we'll start doing a bit of turning tomorrow, I think. I'm just going to mark up from each corner. And it's fairly square. I did cut it quite square. As I mentioned before, this is, uh, this is called aphromosia. I did refer to it as African teak. Since I've done a little bit more reading up, and actually it's not a relation to the teak family at all. It's just got very similar characteristics apparently. So um, we can mark the centre of the tenon there so I can bring the tail stock up to that. Whilst I think about it, we've just uh, this week surpassed 100 subscribers. So um, that doesn't seem like a lot, but we've only been going for a few weeks. So I'm quite pleased with that really. So what I'm gonna do to mark the occasion and to get to the next milestone is the sister block of aphromosia um, that I cut from this one, I'm going to turn into a bowl and this will be given away as a, 
um, just a giveaway for when we reach 500 subscribers. So please subscribe to the channel and uh, anybody that leaves a comment will be entered into the, the draw to receive whatever this block of aphromosia gets turned into. I'm considering doing uh, an inlay bowl with some epoxy, but I've not quite decided yet. So um, as I say, anybody who comments on this video that I'm making now and subsequent videos will be entered into the draw. Please do subscribe and get your thumbs up as well, because that obviously will increase our subscriber rate and we'll get to that milestone even quicker and give it away to somebody even quicker. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is mount the wood to the lathe using a screw chuck. But also what I'm gonna do at the same time is check on my depth, how deep we wanna go with this bowl, and then I'll drill down there and that'll also give me my depth guide for when I hollow it out. Okay, so I swapped out for a slightly bigger drill and uh, marked off my 55 mil again. So we'll just... And now hopefully this, the thread will start to bite. Okay, so I'm gonna get this mounted onto the lathe um, and then I'll adjust the cameras and we can see if we can turn this tenon down, make this round and start shaping the outside. Down as far as we can go so it's nice and secure. There you go, that's kind of tightened that down a little bit actually, that's made that a lot more level on there. And then bring that up and actually that is not, that's not far off at all, I'm happy with that. I will just take that tenon down I think first of all. Okay, so what I did there was just turn the tenon, put a slight dovetail on there. We'll reverse that when we're ready to mount in the jaws. But for now, I'm gonna see if I can shape the outside of this bowl. Okay, I've just given the bowl gouge a little bit of a sharpen. Now we'll see if we can get a little bit of shape. Definitely dusty. So, quite pleased so far. The shape is coming along nicely. It's wider at the base and narrows in uh, into the top, which is what I wanted. I will round that over when we reverse it. What I'm actually thinking as well is this shoulder to the tenon that I made is actually looking quite nice contrasted with the aphromosia. So I might actually leave that on there, but I did a terrible job of cutting it. So I'm gonna tidy up that shoulder there and that may well turn into a bit of a, a decorative foot, a bit of a feature. So um, yeah, I'll uh, swap the camera around and we'll see if we can tidy off that shoulder a little bit. Okay, well I tried a couple of different shapes on there. I tried rounding over that edge, but I actually prefer just a straight cut in. So I think what I'm gonna do now is see if I can just clean up the sides here a little bit more, and then, uh, then we'll reverse it. 
and, uh, and we'll go from there, start hollowing out. There are a few little tool marks in there and I'm just not that proficient yet to, uh, to get those out fully using tools. So um, I have read that this wood is a lot less oily than teak, so it does sand quite well. So what I'm gonna do quickly is just get a little piece of um, 120 grit and just see if I can take a few of those, those, uh, those tool marks out. See whether it's going to sand up okay. If it is, then I'm not going to worry too much about trying to remove them with a tool and I'll just hit it with a sander later. Yeah, they're actually coming out okay, so I think that'll be fine to, uh, to sand that down later on and get those marks out. I'm just wondering whether I've made my tenon a little bit deep as well. So I might just take a couple of mil off of that because I don't want that to be making any contact with the back of a chuck because then it's not very secure. So I'm just going to take that down by about two mil and then we'll uh, then I'll reverse it and we'll get started on hollowing it out. much better it's going to get a better contact in there now less worried about that so let's take this get this reversed and I've made the tenon too small well on the plus side, I didn't remove that foot, so that can now become our tenon. What an idiot. Okay, well, this is all part of a learning process, isn't it? I need to uh, go a bit easier when shaping my tenon, clearly. Okay, so what I've done is I've made this part of a tenon too small and it's not gripping it. So um, on the plus side, I do have this piece that I was going to use as a foot. Um, so I can now turn that into the tenon and I'll take this down completely. And hopefully I won't get the size of this one wrong. Okay, so what I want to do with this piece now is I want a fairly wide rim and I may well slope that back a little bit. I do like slope back rims, but I'm probably going to just make a mark around about there, I guess. I can about there and I probably will end up going a little bit thinner than that when I do the final Hollow, but that for now is just a, uh, a good guideline. I know I'm now down deep enough, so I'm just going to continue to work out these sides and that bottom bit there. Hopefully my head's not getting in the way too much when I'm down there working on it. Um, if it is, apologies, I'll, uh, I'll work a bit harder next time on camera angles.
Oh, so I really need to find a better way of hollowing because it's no good for the nerves using um, using carbides or a bowl gouge at that depth. It's, uh, it's jumping around and catching. I've started to use the scraper a little bit, which is uh, a bit easier, but I just can't get that angle in there. So I do have a slightly narrower scraper, which um, which I'll try, but it's a lot thinner. These, um, these scrapers are kind of picked up on Facebook um, just for a couple of quid each. And it actually looks like they've been made out of uh, old files. So I don't know whether this one's gonna be any good, but, but I'm gonna give it a go. And if anybody's got any suggestions how I can hollow this out um, a little bit easier in future whilst keeping my nerves intact, I'm, uh, I'm more than willing to listen. It's a little bit better actually. I've um, I've kind of just a bit of trial and error. Just discovered that by angling the carbide scraper, the round one, doesn't cause any catches, and um, it's, it's kind of smoothing it out quite nicely actually. So I'm going to persist with that, and then uh, then a little bit later on, I think I'll hit YouTube and see if I can find a bit of a better way of doing it. I think I'm happy with that. We have now got our outside shape just right. I've got that sloped lip there, which I, uh, which is a favorite of mine. I've hollowed out to quite a thin, probably just over a centimeter wide it's looking um it's looking quite nice actually so i'm quite pleased it's getting late the camera battery is about to die so i'm going to call it a night and then we'll um we'll come back in tomorrow and finish it off i think all we need to do really is turn it round tidy up the foot uh, actually before we turn So it is the next day, so as you probably gather, the battery did run out as we were filming. Um, and I've also managed to set up the, uh, the camera at a bit of a better angle, so hopefully you can get a bit of a better view without me getting in the way. Anyway, having looking at this with fresh eyes this morning, I'm not happy with the, uh, the profile of the bowl. I think I want to go a little bit narrower at the top, so it's a little bit more kind of tulip shaped. Um, there's a little lip just on that edge which I want to uh, to take off as well. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes angling this in and then we're going to make a start on cleaning out the inside and uh, sanding it, finishing it and then we'll spin it round to, um, to do the base of a foot. So that is looking pretty good actually. Um, after I had a bit of a disaster yesterday with the scraper in there, um, I kind of realized that I was meant to be angling it to avoid all the catches. So I did also did a bit of um, YouTube research last night and, uh, and yeah, that pretty much confirmed what I was doing wrong, which is good, at least I figured it out. Um, and uh, and that's just gone so much better. It's smooth in there. It's down to about down to about there now. So um, so only a little bit on the bottom, and the edges now are really quite thin. They sort of thicken out a little bit and thin out to the top. I really like that actually. Shape's great. I like the little dip on the lip, and um, 
just needs a good sanding up and then I'll uh, go through the grits with the sandpaper, use a bit of Yorkshire True Grit and then uh, give it a coat of something. I haven't quite decided yet. I've got some um, wax and mineral oil paste that I've made up. I might use that or I might go in with a little bit of uh, tongue oil or something like that. But, um, but yeah, I'll uh, get on with a little bit of sanding on the inside. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll move on to the next stage. But yeah, so far, so good. So I've not quite sorted out my dust extraction yet. So what I've been doing is wedging my hoover, my workshop hoover attachment through the bottom. And that's been taking a lot of the dust that's coming out. So it's about to get noisy. So, um, so yeah, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, looking good. So that's everything sanded out in there and around the side. All the tool marks have pretty much gone. What I'm going to do now is just give it a rub down with some denatured alcohol just to get all the dust out of the pores. Then I'm going to give it a coat of sanding sealer. Then I'm going to leave it a little while and then um, go and cook the kids some food and then come back and finish this off this evening. This is when you also get to see what that grain is going to start looking like. That is not bad. Lovely kind of deep honey and light brown colour. The grain is quite thin in places. It kind of spreads out in other places, giving it a nice bit of contrast. Bit of chatoyance in there as well. Nice little shimmer under the light. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that actually. Not bad. Not bad for a boring old bit of wood. So this is just the chestnut sanding sealer cellulose based and what this does is just seals all of those pores so that when you put your finish on there the end grain pores which obviously suck everything up a lot quicker than the side grain does doesn't take all of that finish and make it a really uneven finish. So this just kind of closes up those pores. Well, that's my understanding anyway. I'm sure um, I'm sure somebody will tell me otherwise if I've got that completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the situation. And um, because I'm going to be using True Grit, which is an abrasive wax paste, it is recommended that you do seal this first. And what we will need to do obviously is turn this around after we've done all of that and um, and tidy up the foot and do the, the same process again on the underneath. As you can tell I haven't been wood turning very long and um, some of the methods probably aren't that orthodox but you know as long as the end result is satisfactory, then can't really complain, can we? Right, I think just looking in there, I think that's pretty much all in. That's looking good. Cool. Anyway, right, so I'm going to have a bit of a clean up, go and get the kids dinner on the go. And um, they're off at football training at the moment, so I will be back a little bit later tonight, hopefully. Okay, so we're going to apply some True Grit. This is an abrasive paste that acts like a sandpaper. It takes it down to about a thousand grit without all of that dust going up in the air. So all we do is apply it liberally to the piece and then turn the lathe on. And then you essentially just rub it all off um, until you can't feel it anymore.
Okay, it's looking good. I've cleaned it up with some methylated spirits and I'm just going to finish it with some mineral oil and beeswax. So I think this has turned out really well actually. I really like the shape of a bowl, it kind of has a bit of a tulip shape with a drop down lip there, that's one of my favourite types. Um, the grain pattern um, across the whole bowl is, uh, is brilliant and the colours are great as well. Really didn't expect this to come out of that big brown block of wood that we started with. Also that cherry foot as well that I did intend to take off completely. Um, I actually think that's quite a, a nice little feature on it now. So, yeah, overall really pleased. Um, learnt quite a few lessons doing this one as well, particularly around using the carbide scraper when hollowing out. Um, learnt that you need to angle it to avoid getting all of the catches. Um, but yeah, this is what it's all about. It's all about learning from your mistakes and moving on to the next one. Talking about moving on, this is the block of aphromosia that that bowl came from and what I'm intending on doing with this is turning it into something, either a bowl or a presentation piece or something else. Um, if you've got any suggestions for me, please let me know in the comments. And what I am going to do is as soon as we hit 500 subscribers, anybody that's commented on this video, uh, previous videos and subsequent videos will enter a draw to win whatever I make this into. So I could be turning this into something like this just for you. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.